Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a snowmobile video. Sorry Titan guys. This is going to be an Arctic Cat power valve cable replacement, APV power valves. And now these APV systems are very similar on all Arctic Cats. Going way back to the Fire Cats even before that, the LZRs. Um, a few issues that can happen if you're not using a good quality synthetic oil. These can gum up and and uh, bind. They get stuck. You don't open and close. There's also a spring inside here, which we're going to look at later. Those can deform. They can break. I've seen them broken. Um, if the spring is gone, the valve's not going to return. Um, and then my issue here is the cables themselves. They're kind of broken. They're not. Uh, see, once they're like that, they're not going to work properly. So this is what we're going to replace them with. They're Suzuki parts. Um, there's two different sizes, one for each side. This is for an F Artica F1000 2007, so there's a long side. And so this is where our servo motor is located, right underneath the ECU. Right, sorry, we're in the shadow. It is right here. And that's an eight millimeter bolt on there. So you can grab your small ratchet and you also want some pliers to hold um, the gear. So what I'm going to do to start is take my needles pliers and remove the clip. Um, what I've also done, which I haven't shown you, is I remo removed the wiring from the ECU just to give me some more room here. Kind of move that out of the way best we can and then you can take your cables pull them down and out and we're going to pull the servo motor gear off now to pull that off I hold it with these pliers and use my 8 millimeter Okay, there's one more clip on here. You can just pull that off. And then you can see your cables here. Slide them out. Set these aside. And for maintenance of these cables, um, there is a. Sorry, one of my lights went out. You can still see there is a spec on the length, um, and it's more important that the two cables are equal length than the actual length spec. Um, so there's a range when we put it back together with the new cables, we'll check that. So with them extended, measure them with the caliper, and you can test them by pulling them. See that one doesn't pull well at all. This one, you can hear it. Here's a power valve cable opening and snapping back. So this one doesn't want to pull. And we'll take them out, clean them, put the new cables on and set them to the proper length. And now to remove the power valves, I've got a 10 millimeter on extension bolts per side really, really long these impact drivers speed things up getting them out and when they go in I'll just hand tighten them to go back
Now they just pull out. You will have to turn, twist. And the cables are just connected on the other side. There's one. The other one comes out a bit easier. There's the other. Now let's take a closer look at these. These aren't too bad as far as deposits, but I am going to clean them. Um, they do have some oil on them. I'm going to break clean them. I've been using Amsoil Dominator, which is a bit thicker oil. Um, I know the interceptor would keep these cleaner than this. So I might switch to that oil. I've, I've ran the interceptor for quite a few years. I only ran the Dominator for one year because my F1000 does have quite a few mods on it and I've got two new springs to go on I'm going to take these completely apart and clean them up as best as possible there are gaskets they are reusable if you're doing a complete engine rebuild or you have a an old motor maybe you want to replace those as well but my motor is not that old and these are fairly good shape they should be good once I get them cleaned up so I'm going to start cleaning them up and uh, show you how to disassemble and reassemble so we're doing this one at a time to keep things straight so I've got a four millimeter hex Two machine screws. Okay, so that uh, unattaches your cable, but it's also attached down here as well. So take a three millimeter. That doesn't have to come all the way out, just enough. And it's stuck on there pretty good. Actually, I think it does have to come most of the way out because it goes through. There we go. That pops out. So look at this gasket here. Does say which way goes up. And this will slide out. So your top gasket. On gasket, and there's the valve. I'm going to take these over the pressure washer in a minute, and then the cable assembly. Okay, so I got to figure it out here. What you got to do is you got to get this inner spring down and out on the ends, and then the inner spring also has to go through the slot. So then you have this piece. Um, the inner spring is part of the cable, which is going to be replaced. And then you have the outer spring, which I'm going to replace. Set that aside. And then you can pull your cable out. So this spring was kind of stuck. I had to pull it out with a pick and before I could get the cable. So there's our old cable. And that one, that one moved fairly well. That one's not bad. But I'm sure it could be better. And uh, I'll show you how to put it back together. One thing I noticed when cleaning up the other one, um, which I never really noticed before, is that these gaskets are kind of like a 
rubberized steel. So if you see the coating starting to peel off, then it might be a good idea to replace them. Um, these ones look to be pretty good shape, but there was a couple spots where it looks like the rubberized coating is starting to, to lift. So I may replace these in the uh, not too distant future. And also in this middle piece here, there's a seal um, around the shaft. I'll show you on the other one because I've got it cleaned up. And be careful not to damage that seal. Um, if you clean it, clean it gently so you're not breaking that and removing that seal. And uh, yeah, that's it for that. And I've got the other one cleaned up. I've just got to dry it off and uh, I'll put it back together. I've got my pieces all cleaned up and lined up. And I'm just going to use the one that I haven't taken apart yet as a guide. Um, so I'm going to face it the same way. This is a, the guillotine which raises the exhaust port. And I'm going to put it the slot up. And it goes through the bottom gasket. The bottom gasket has the holes at the one side. And then our bottom piece. And these are the two pins that line up into the, the cylinder. Um, to make sure you've got it oriented the right way, the right way up. So the two two pins go in the two holes. So it does say uh, this is supposed to be UP for up. So when you're putting it in, that will fit. it's supposed to be oriented like that. So it says up. I guess like this. If you're putting it in, it says up. So do that. goes in there like that so so far this is right kind of messed up up here Cable has to go through here first. Okay, and that, I, this I don't believe has a top and bottom. It's universal. All right, so we're back to here. Big spring up, small spring down. And then, through the slot. On here, here, bolt on the left, and then I'm gonna line that up. Clean up our hole. So that's how you change the cable, and then let's just make sure it's going to line up. It does, and then we'll fasten our cable with those two short bolts. Four millimeter. And the same thing on the other side, disassemble clean. 
Let me spring a new cable on it and then we'll put them back in the sled. So this is what I was talking about, the issues with these springs breaking. Um, as you can see I have one shorter than the other and this is the one that wasn't returning properly. So that may have been my issue. Um, I was having a, a check engine light on my sled because of the pop and it was flashing the power valve code so this could be the problem here and that spring is broken so I'm gonna put new ones on when you go to put them in slot at the bottom and remember the two pins and I put a little bit of brake clean on paper towel I'm gonna just clean that surface up um, so that gaskets can see better. See that I've done this one already. There was one thing I forgot to mention. Um, the orientation of the cables or the bend in the cable. Um, I've got these sitting as if they would go into the engine now. So the pins are at the top and the um, slots at the bottom and they're facing in. So this one's correct. Uh, I've got to change this one. So it goes to, it would actually be the left side. If you're seeing the slide, it would be the left side. So this one has to go that way. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So this is super easy. Just loosen these uh, a little bit and then turn it. And then you're gonna take your Allen. You're gonna tighten that back up again. Get these guys in, push your cable down the side, kind of wiggle, aim for the slot. Put the slot on the bottom, pins at the top, and you got to kind of pull up and line up your gaskets and stuff. Push down. sure everything is in the right direction and then you're going to take your bolts two bolts with blue lock plate on them and they're going to help line everything up those by hand. One more. Got the stuff in the way. Put this one in. Little arm. Extension helps. Up. Try and get everything lined up. Drop your two bolts in. Now an extension helps. Tighten everything by hand. Get a torque wrench set to 96 inch pounds. It's not a lot. Okay, now we can start looking at the cables and adjusting those to the proper length. With the power valves now installed, we can check the length of the cables. And this is how you measure it with calipers. And for the 1000cc motor, the length we're looking for is 35 millimeters. With the calipers, we're going to measure the length. And just 
like that. So 35.05, so that's pretty much bang on. Pretty much the same, 35.07 on the second one, so that's close enough. We'll hook them up. With your cables back on and the clip back on, you're going to remount the servo gear onto the servo motor and you're going to look for the mark on the servo shaft which lines up with this end of the gear. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to see that, but I'll try. Yeah, you can see it right there. So, I'm going to remount that. The 8 millimeter bolt is tightened back up, and I've loosened the cable so there's just a tiny bit of slack and reinstalled my clip. And we'll put the rest of the sled back together and test it. 